Hey guys, Kelvin K Muse. We are here to talk about how Junkie Excel Tom uh, basically takes a sample library in in his particular case was uh, cinematic strings and how he was talking about in one of his latest videos how he basically transformed every single sample and made it his own. So basically, even though it's cinematic strings, it's not the library that you and I would buy. And I am here to show you guys this really, really cool and amazing trick on how to achieve that with your own sample libraries. Stay tuned. All right, guys, let's get right to this. Um, this is a very simple trick, actually. It's just extremely time consuming, um, especially when it comes to string libraries or horns or, you know, like brass, any library that has thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of samples. It's just going to take you forever. Um, so that's why most people uh, opt to just edit the sound as they go. However, if you're in a position where you can have someone like your assistant or, or maybe you're not having a lot of work lately um, or you're just getting started and this is something that you may want to do, then more kudos to you. I have done this with some of uh, some of the uh, string libraries, but um, I'm not going to be showing you guys one of those libraries yet because those libraries have 86,000, 100,000 samples and you know, the, the amount of samples is just ridiculously large. So what I'm going to be showing you guys is with one of my favorite libraries that I've talked about before, and it's called a clocks by or clock by ADO. So we're basically going to be taking one of the sounds of the clock and we're going to be transforming it. And then I'm going to show you how you make that back onto the instrument so that you can actually just load up the contact uh, ver contact instance and be able to play what the sample that you just created using their GUI. Um, and it's actually so simple, you guys. So I can't wait to get started, but let's go ahead and show this. So basically this is, this, let's just go ahead and start with, with one right here. And this is the sound you hear, you hear that it's just a simple click sound and it's a clock. Uh, so we got ahead and go grab that and throw this down to logic. Whoops, I did not do that. What happened? Uh, there we go. All right. So we have that on here. Let's go ahead and zoom in a little bit because this is just a very small, uh, you know, it's, it's just a, a tick. So that's the sound that we that we're working with right now. Uh, it's just a little ticking noise. We actually just write a little loop right there. It's probably going to sound terrible if I loop it. <laughs> All right, but you guys get the gist of it. So that is the sound that ADO gives us to play around with. The GUI for this um, specific instrument is fantastic. Um, it gives you a lot of things to play around with, but if you want to make it your own, then you got to make it your own. So basically, um, let's see that you only have one sample that you want to edit. And this is how you would go about one sample. I honestly don't know of a single library that has just one sample, but what the heck? Maybe you created your own uh, library and I don't know, maybe your friend created a, li a library that has one sample and you want to edit that one sample. But anywho, very simple. You go ahead, you load at this and then you just go crazy. You start, start adding, you know, your own plugins, excuse me. Um, and then you go ahead and start adding your own plugins onto this. And that is pretty much it. So you guys, uh, like, uh, let's say that I wanted to add some EQ, my favorite EQ, which is the fat filter Q2. Um, we have that sound and let's say that we wanted to maybe do a low cut and, um, make it, oh, I loaded this to the wrong, to the wrong track. Let's stop that. I don't know you guys. Um, let's go ahead and expand this just a little bit so that it doesn't sound so repetitive. So here we go. Now we're on the right track. And so we got to go ahead and load the EQ, right? And let's say that we wanted that sound to be a little bit more, um, more like a phone or something. So you see, we go ahead and add, just do, you know, we'll do a, a, a high cut. And 
And now that sounds completely different than the original. Now let's say that you wanted to add some reverb, then you can do that as well. Here is my favorite reverb. Um, since this is a clock, then we want something that is really, really tight, right? Really tight and really small. So let's go with the tight small right there. And there you have it. And there we are creating our own sound, right? So let's say that, ah, I don't like that. So you can eliminate that. So, so there you have it. So you have, that was the original sound. And you see, I just made it completely different. Now, if I was to, uh, the, the final thing that you need to do is basically export this or bounce this onto an audio file. I highly recommend you guys that you first back up the original sounds that they give you with the library before you go out and get crazy and, you know, start experimenting with your own version of everything. But basically, you need to bounce this and name it exactly like this is right here and put it in the samples folder. And that is it. That's all you do when you load the instance. It's just going to look for this specific sample with that name on it. And once it's fine, once, once the, the contact instance finds the name that that name in your samples folder, it'll, it's going to load this creation that you just made. Now let's say that you have a strings library, right? And you know, it, it says violin one legato and violin one legato has, I don't know, probably 2000 samples um, in order to achieve what it does. But for this uh, demonstration, let's say that it takes 10 samples. So we're going to go ahead, select all of the 10 samples that you need to edit. And we grab those onto Logic. We create new tracks. And bam, there we have them. We have all the 10 tracks that we need to edit. So what you would want to do is you select them all. You go right here onto the mixer. And we want to send these to a bus. And the, let's say that we just sent them to a bus. A beautiful thing that Logic does for you is that automatically creates that auxiliary channel for that bus. So once you have that bus selected, uh, we go ahead and add the effects there. So let's say that you want to add <clears throat> the, you want to add some delay. Let's, let's see that we go ahead and go to Fab Filter. We load the Timeless 2, which is a fantastic delay. Um, very often used as well by Junkie XL, if you guys are interested in knowing. Um, so we have the Timeless 2 right there, and we have it on that bus. And basically, we want to mute everything except one sample, right? So we have that going, and then we're going to start adding that bus. Oh, you see how the sound is starting to completely change. Um, if I turn this bus off, we get the original sound, but all of a sudden, oh, now you're starting to like that sound a little bit better, huh? So then we go here and the beautiful thing about using bus sense is that you apply the amount of the effect that you want. So if you added, you know, right here on the first auxiliary, you added the timeless, you can, you, you can send multiple tracks onto there, but you apply the amount of, of the effect that you want to individual tracks. So let's, let's take this track, for example. All right. You see, we have, um, the amount that we sent on on the first one, we have it right here. The amount of 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 that uh, delay that we wanted, we added it on here. But let's say that on this one, we just want to go crazy and add just a hundred percent. And there you have it. Um, and that's basically what you would do to every single sample. Now. Once again, you guys, if you are going to do this, you are going to need a lot of time uh, because it's going to take you a long time to perfect. Um, I do recommend doing it on, uh, you know, at least if you're doing it 
if you're scoring whatever project you're, you're working on, try to edit the sound, even if it's just for that session. And once you're done, you can actually just go ahead and save those settings so that when, when you want to, you know, edit or alterate your, your sample libraries, it'll be easier because you already have the settings set up. But um, I do recommend at least for your for for a project to project basis, don't stick with the sound that they give us from from you know the specific companies like ADO or Spitfire or whatever company you you work, you have samples from. Don't stick to the original sound. Try to edit it. Try to make it your own because it, it's so important to just bring the you onto every project that you do. So. Uh, that is basically it you guys that is the, you know if you guys have any questions if you if you actually really truly want me to do this with a strings library so you can see what it sounds like or if I, if you want me to basically do the editing and then you guys can see how it loads up um, we're using the actual GUI in contact and just let me know let me know what you guys want to see um, let me know if this was helpful uh, and I can't wait to to speak to you guys about this and and I hope this was extremely helpful uh, I saw a lot of people asking questions about it on uh, Tom's video so I figured I'd show you guys a little bit because I'm sure Tom is very busy <laughs> scoring amazing movies um, but anyways you guys I can't wait to hear your feedback and I will see you all very soon <laughs>